The movie begins by showing Baku Matarame, a genius gambler nicknamed Usagui or the Lie Eater, and Soichi Kuruma, the 21st leader of the Kakero Club, who are gambling in a skyscraper. Kakero Club, the most prominent gambling organization in Japan, oversaw many gambling games. Its members come from high-ranking elites in the government. It could rival even the Japanese government. At that time, Baku directly challenged the leader of the Kakero Club by placing his own life as a bet. His goal in doing so is to take over Soichi's position as leader of the Kakero Club. The betting was overseen by two referees named Mitoshi and Hikoichi. Hikoichi explained that in this game, the two of them would play a simple game where each player had to predict whether the location above them would be passed by a plane. After eating the biscuits, Baku confidently predicted that a plane would fly past that location within an hour. Unexpectedly, with the power possessed by the Kakero Club, they could easily divert all flights in Japan. So, not a single plane passed through the gambling location. Even one of the planes hired by Baku failed to make a flight because Soichi had sent people to kill the pilot. As a result, Baku was officially declared to have lost the gamble. Hikoichi would execute him. But Soichi suddenly cancelled Baku's execution and decided that Baku would be exiled to a remote place and his membership status in Kakero Club would be revoked. The scene shifts to three years after the betting battle and shows Baku in a remote area called Mikurajima. Baku was approaching a group of amateur gamblers who were placing bets. He surprised everyone because he immediately put a bet of 1 million yen while saying that he would expose the bookie's lies. Unexpectedly, Baku immediately won the bet in just one round. He then uncovered that the bookie had placed a magnet in his dice and another magnet under the table. The magnet made the number of dice that came out always the same. That lie could be exposed easily by Baku. It turns out that he had also placed a magnet in the pile of his money so that one of the dice that came out would change position. The players who already knew the bookie's fraud immediately ganged up on the bookie. In the evening, Baku met one of his colleagues at a restaurant. His friend told him that in Tokyo, there was an uproar because someone wanted to beat the leader of the Kakero Club, just like what Baku did before. Baku's friend explained that that person was a researcher named Iki Satakuni, and he was the one who had found a breakthrough for mining methane hydrate. Methane hydrate was a new energy that could replace oil, and Iki invested all of his funds in the research without involving the government. But one day, an explosion in his lab killed all laboratory members and made Iki disappear from the public. Finally, Baku's friend received information from a source who said that Iki was now aiming for the highest position in Kakero Club and wanted to challenge Soichi to beat him. Hearing that, Baku felt excited to return to Tokyo to avenge his past. The next scene shows a gambling match between Masahiro Onodera, the Minister of Finance, versus Iki Satakuni, where the gambling was directly supervised by the 10th referee of Kakero Club named Kiro Mekama. It turns out that Minister of Finance Onodera deliberately challenged Iki to the gamble because he wanted to dominate the next general election by taking advantage of Iki's research results. Unfortunately, Onodera's ambition turned out to be a total failure because Iki was a researcher and a genius gambler. He was even able to win the gamble six rounds in a row. Onodera, who had been badly beaten in the gamble, immediately ordered his men to kill Mekama. Onodera apparently couldn't do any underhanded tricks because Mekama was watching him. But Mekama has excellent martial arts skills, so that he could finish off Onodera and his men without anyone's help. After the gambling, Mekama went to Iki and said he wanted to be his referee, and Iki immediately agreed. Sometime later, Baku, who had arrived in Tokyo, accidentally became acquainted with a young man named Takeami Kaji. Kaji was a very kind-hearted young man. Unfortunately, he had been cheated by his friend and owed a lot of money to loan sharks. Baku, who felt sorry for Kaji, finally offered to help Kaji to pay off his debts. At night, the two went to an illegal casino owned by a woman named Ronko Kurama. She was a member of the Kakero Club and an old friend of Baku. Baku and Kaji played roulette with the money they had exchanged into coin chips. They had to bet coins on the numbers on the board. If the ball stops at the number they chose, they have won the bet. Baku intentionally staked his coin on all numbers except those already chosen. Kaji thought Baku's way was idiotic. That would make them lose more coins. Unexpectedly, Baku won so many times that he then raised the stakes. Unfortunately, on that occasion, Baku failed, much to Kaji's frustration, as they had already lost so much money. Even so, Baku didn't want to give up so quickly, and he again raised the ante to bet on all numbers except the red nine. Shortly after, Baku opened his biscuit and made Kaji, who saw it, immediately put all his chip coins on the number nine red. The scene then changes to show some time before Baku and Kaji start gambling. Baku had planned all this, including ordering Kaji to bet all his coin chips at a number Baku had yet to choose as soon as he took out his biscuits. Unexpectedly, Baku knew that the game had been manipulated because the bookie could direct the ball to whatever number he wanted. In the end, Baku and Kaji won 5 million yen, much to Ronko's surprise. On their way home, Baku instead gave all the money they had won to Kaji to use the money to pay off debts and move on with his life. Unfortunately, Baku felt that their relationship would end there. 
Baku did not want to endanger Kaji's life by gambling. As time passed, Kaji paid all his debts and lived in luxury. Even so, he felt bored because he didn't have any challenges in his life. Even though he now had a lot of money, he still could not feel happiness like when he was with Baku. On the other hand, Baku finally managed to meet Iki and challenged him to a gamble. Unfortunately, Iki turned down Baku's challenge at that time because he was not part of the Kakero Club. After being rejected by Iki, Baku met Ronko and tried to find a way to rejoin the Kakero Club. Ronko explained that if Baku wanted to make this happen, he had to find a member of the Kakero Club willing to surrender their membership status to Baku. Ronko then advised Baku to meet an old man. He was a member of the Kakero Club who might be able to pass on his membership status to Baku. However, Ronko warned that the man was a psychopath named Taro Kakane. When Ronko was about to explain in more detail about Taro, it turned out that Baku had already left her. On his way home, Baku met Kaji again, who immediately begged him to be allowed to come. Unexpectedly, Baku agrees to Kaji's wishes, and the two strategize to deal with Taro. The scene changes and shows Baku and Kaji deliberately pretending to be poor people, so Taro wants to take them to gamble. Seeing this, Taro then directed them to his house, which was in the forest. He explained that in this gamble, Baku and Kaji had to catch several of their pets to get the key within a predetermined time. If they both succeeded, Taro would give 10 million yen as a prize. At that place, Baku again met with Hikoichi, who came as a representative referee from Kakero Club. Unexpectedly, Baku told Taro that he didn't want a money bet. He wanted Taro to give up his membership status if Baku and Kaji managed to finish the gamble. Hearing this, Taro became challenged, so he agreed with Baku's request and made Baku overjoyed. Before starting the gamble, Baku gave a pen to Hikoichi as a present. The pen was a recording device that was directly connected to Baku. That device could make Baku hear all of Taro and Akacha's conversations in the room. Sometime later, the gambling finally started. Baku and Kaji immediately entered the forest to find Taro's five pets. But it turns out that Taro's pets are not animals but armed humans. Baku and Kaji defeated the first pet with their cooperation. They also beat the second pet by tricking it using a voice recording. Meanwhile, they defeated the third and fourth pets using strong ropes they had deliberately installed. Baku and Kaji also managed to paralyze the last pet by swapping their clothes with the clothes of the third and fourth pets. In the end, Baku and Kaji finally finished the gamble. This annoyed Taro, so he gave up the ultimate pet he had. It was a stout human named Rotom who turned out to be Taro's son and turned into a hideous monster. Even so, Rotom had one weakness. His brain was too small, so he always fell asleep after 15 minutes. Seeing Rotom, Baku and Kaji tried to escape. They entered a warehouse and found a bottle of ethanol. Baku also came up with the idea of using ethanol as a weapon to sedate Rotom. They finally managed to win over Taro's membership status. Shortly after, Hikoichi congratulated Kaji for officially being a member of the Kakero Club. Initially, Kaji needed clarification when he was chosen to be a member of the Kakero Club, not Baku. The real reason why Baku wanted Kaji to accompany him was that in the past, the leader of the Kakero Club had made Baku no longer a member, so he needed someone as a bridge. Even so, Kaji refused it at first, but in the end, he melted after hearing Hikoichi's suggestion to believe in Baku. The following day, Baku returned to the forest to pick Rotom up. Even though Rotom was created as a monster, he still had a human soul. So, Baku invited Rotom to join his group and changed his name to Marco. The scene then shows what actually happened to Iki and his team after they managed to make a discovery about methane hydrate. At that time, Iki was meeting the representative of the Japanese government, Anadera, and said he wanted to share the invention free of charge with other countries. That made the Japanese government angry and sent a bomb into his laboratory. The explosion then killed all the scientists in his laboratory. Even though Iki managed to survive, it turned out that he lost his eyesight. Since then, Iki has been determined to dominate the Japanese government by becoming the leader of the Kakero Club. Meanwhile, the day of gambling between Baku and Iki finally arrived. Many of the country's elite and members of the Kakero Club, including Ronko, witnessed this gambling directly. When the two players enter the gambling arena, Iki's assistant scares Kaji. He accidentally shot his weapon and damaged one of the CCTV cameras. Before the betting started, Hikoichi invited the audience to act as gambling investors. One by one, the investors began donating millions of yen as their bets to guess which player would win. Besides seeing the excitement of gambling, these investors also paid a lot to determine what punishment would be received by the losing player. Given a big gamble like this would definitely risk lives, in a short time, investors managed to raise 2 billion yen worth of money as their bets. After that, investors had the right to determine what punishment the losing player would get. They agreed to choose Hangman as the punishment this time. Hangman is a punishment that obliges the losing player and his partner to be hanged together. No less than the investors, Soichi, the leader of the Kakero Club, looked excited watching the gambling progress. Shortly after, the gamble between Baku and Iki finally started. 
they will play a gambling game called Hangman of Maid. Hikoichi explained that both players must take turns taking cards from their opponents to find the same partner. Any player who gets an old mate card at the end of the bet will immediately lose. In the old mate card, there are numbers from 1 to 5. That number will determine the number of assembled gallows parts, and whichever player gets a total of 11 old mate cards will also be declared a loser immediately. Not only that, but Hikoichi also explained that in this gambling game, each player is free to carry out any sneaky tactics as long as the opposing players don't find out. Iki chose the correct card in the first round, so Baku got an old mate worth 5. Even though the number was considered very high for the first round, Baku still looked very relaxed. In the second round, Iki regained the lead after an old mate card worth 4 ended up in Baku's hands. Baku now had collected 9 out of 11 cards which also determined the number of parts of the gallows. This frustrated Kaji and Ronko, who placed bets for Baku because they thought he would definitely lose. The worries of the two grew even more during the third round. Baku again got an old mate card worth 1, which means that Baku has collected as many as 10 old mate cards and one more point. So, Baku and Kaji will be hanged together. In the last round, Baku was determined to turn things around and as usual, he took out his favorite biscuit and started playing the planned trick. Baku had realized from the start of the game that Iki could see all of his cards. Even though Baku knew that Iki had lost his eyesight, something made Iki able to see through the CCTV in the gambling arena. This made Baku always cover his cards from the surveillance of CCTV cameras. That method also made Iki always choose old mate cards so that his hanging points continued to increase. In the last round, Baku openly looked directly at Iki's card. This made Iki's assistant want to protest, but Hikochi stopped her immediately because what Baku was doing was legal. Baku then drew an old mate card with a pen, which makes Iki think that Baku had the last old mate card, even though it is in his hand. Baku was finally able to prove that Iki had committed fraud even though Iki couldn't see directly. It turned out that someone had installed a device behind Iki's back so that his brain could see everything happening through the CCTV. Luckily, before the gambling started, one of the CCTVs was damaged due to Kaji's actions. Baku took advantage of the CCTV damage as a blind spot for Iki. However, Mekama did not accept his master's defeat, so he attacked Baku. Unfortunately, Mekama's action was stopped by Hikoichi, who served as the referee. Hikoichi managed to beat Mekama and immediately killed him. In the end, Baku's genius tactics made him a winner, while Iki and his partner were hanged. Unexpectedly, Iki accepted the defeat willingly. Before being hanged, Iki said he would always support Baku to bring peace to the world. Not only that, Iki officially gave Baku his membership status so that he had the right to challenge the leader of the Kakero Club again in gambling. Just before the execution started, Baku showed a picture of Iki and his friends in the laboratory so that Iki could die happily. The film ended by showing Baku, Kaji, Ronko, and Marco getting ready to enter the gambling room, and Hikoichi invited and greeted them. The moral that can be learned from this movie is that gambling is never right, and it never has a happy or good ending. Those who win at gambling will only feel addicted. Meanwhile, the losers must accept the harsh reality of losing property and their life.